guys, welcome back to Adventures with Lilu. and in today's video I'm going to actually be staying home but I wanted to go through the kit that I use for my wild camping and show you a few new bits a bit more close up than in my previous videos you can have a proper look at them. So I've also got some new kit to try out as well so I will be introducing those in this video. If you haven't already met me my name's Lilu, and I go car camping, hiking, wild camping now as well and try a little bit of bushcraft and this month I will be going to the Peak District. I was meant to be going today but apparently the forecast is really heavy rain and possibly winds and it'll be my first time pitching this new tent so as much as I want to challenge myself with bad weather I think it's probably not wise to do it the first time using this tent so I'm gonna wait for a few days and on my next um, afternoon off I'm then gonna head up to the Peak District and test it out Apart from that, at the end of the month I've got a long weekend off and I'm hoping to go to North Wales and do a multi-day hike with some wild camping hopefully, or failing that, or both, I don't know yet, some hot tent camping. So I can't wait to share that with you as well, so keep watching. If you haven't already, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you never miss out on an adventure with me, and click the notification bell as well, so that will alert you when a new video comes up. All right, let's get straight into the video. my backpack that I use when I go wild camping. It's a big old boy, he's uh, made by Duta and it's a 60 plus 10 litre uh, backpack, so 70 in total. He's massive, um, but I kind of need a big bag because I kind of take a lot of stuff with me and yes, I've been trying to cut down on the weight, but now I've added a, a slightly heavier tent and I still have all my camera equipment as well, which adds to the weight. But I'm gonna try and show you the best I can how I pack this it's not got everything in it because I'm not literally going right now but you'll get the gist of what what things I've got in this backpack so let's get started so first of all it's really important to get the packing right my first couple of wild camps I stuffed the tent and the sleeping bag down the bottom of the uh, the bag and then obviously realized that if it's raining you have to get everything else out your bag because even though this one does have like a J shaped zip it doesn't open all the way, so it's not always easy to get stuff out the middle of the bag. So I normally go from the top. I've also got, um, it's not a real inner bag, but it is a bag that came with some packaging that is the ideal size to keep things waterproof inside. So I've got that in there as well, which means I have to go from the top. So to start with, let me just open up the lid. This is a detachable lid as well, which is great. It has this toggle here that pulls it all tight. So to start with, this time I'm going to have my tent in the top. Now this is the inner and outer tent, they are both together and it is squashed in a little dry bag. So I'm not going to tell you which tent it is yet, but this is the inner and outer tent squashed together. Look how small it is. So that would be now sat in the top of my bag. So obviously if it's bad weather or I need to pitch up quickly, I can just whip this out, pop it up just like that because it's that easy for me to pitch a tent and um, and we're all set to then get inside the tent and, and do everything else we need to. So that is going to be the tent which I will be showing you in the next video. I've got Mr Drone and as you probably know from previous video I did actually crash my drone. He did take a swim in the river and although it was fresh water it did damage the battery beyond repair. Mr Drone is still working although I am um, his focus isn't 100% anymore which is a real shame because he took some amazing 4k photographs and video and now it's got a little bit of soft focus but he's still working I still have two batteries and in here you've got the full kit plus I have my power bank in here and propeller repairs and bits and pieces in there as well now he does weigh yeah about the same as the tent but I have to take him with me because you never know what you're going to see 
So that's the drone. He goes in the top as well. He's in his own waterproof casing. In here, I've just got my um, toiletries and bits and pieces in there. But also, I have got a new product that was sent to me. These are hand warmers. And because the weather is now getting really cold, these are going to come in really handy. So this is the company here. And both these little hand warmers come together with the chargers and they are really good. I've had a quick go at them, I've charged them up and you literally just press the button at the back like so and they do get hot really quickly. So these are great for your hands or you can put them in your pockets or maybe in your socks. In fact I can feel it getting warm already, that's how good they are. So I will be testing these out later on in the week when I go camping. They're great, I love the packaging as well. It comes in a neat little box and they have their own little travel bag as well. So these are going in my toiletries bag along with bits and pieces like toothbrush, wipes, all that sort of stuff. They're all in there. Right, so next I kind of squashed this in and this is like imaginary because I haven't been food shopping yet but my food would also then be in a plastic bag. I've got some noodles here, some pasta and also hot chocolate and with some condiments I might have uh, taken from McDonald's, but they're really handy. So they would go in there as well. So the food would come out of the bag next. Right, I can't find this one's dry bag. So I've squished it into the biggest one I could find at the moment. But this is my Rab 800 Ascent Ugh, sleeping bag. It's a down bag and it needs to puff up once you've got it out. As you can see, it's compressed at the moment. It needs to flop up and get some air and then it'll be nice and warm. But yeah, so that basically gets squashed into a dry bag and compressed down because this is massive when it's fully fluffed up, shall we say. So that would go near the top as well because you can get it straight out into the tent to be starting to fluff. And, and this one would have all my other clothes, fresh underwear, my bed socks, base layers, stuff like that. So again, it's not fully packed yet because I haven't done it, but this would be my bag of clothes. And lastly, I've got my cook set. So I've got several different cook sets now actually, but this one uses the little gas stove with this tiny, really portable, just got it off Amazon. The link will be in the description, but I find this one really, really good. I mean, you can see it. La, la, la. It's really cheap, um, really, really useful. I love it goes back in his little orange case. Use a bit of kitchen towel on top of the, the uh, pot because it will rattle around otherwise. And then I just take it out of its bag. This is my cook set. So it's got its lid and its base and inside more kitchen towel just to stop it rattling around. I've got my, and this was recommended by some viewers on YouTube, that I can put my gas canister on it like this and it stops it falling over. This canister now is half empty, so it's a bit lighter at least. And in the bottom, wrapped in kitchen towel again, is a lighter, just for ease of everything. I also put my gas stove around a little microfiber cloth, just to stop the noise, stop it rattling around. And then I fold it all up, like that. Put the lid on top. And then stuff this back in its little bag, one minute, and then put this back on top with its kitchen towel and zip it tight. So that is everything. And as you can see, I've just got this clear plastic bag that came as part of packaging for probably the tent or something, but it fits perfectly inside the main part of the, the, the bag. So I can zip that back up out the way. Hello, she's back again. I'll just show you in the front what I've got in here. Basically, I've got my waterproof trousers and they protect my map and compass, which will stay in the front of the bag so it's easy access. And the compass I've got, it's a fairly, I think it's a fairly straightforward one. It's your, your, basic, your basic compass, which is one of those. And whichever map I need, I've got several maps that I use. I normally use OS Maps, I also have the app um, on my phone as well, but I always take a map with me, whichever one, wherever I'm going. And the map of choice goes in the bag with the compass. And I like to just put my waterproof trousers and tuck them 
in the front there to protect it from rain. So yeah, so that that's what goes in the front pocket. Okay, so in the side pocket then, I've got the tent pegs. Um, I like to separate the tent pegs from the tent. It's just easier to be able to put them down the side of the bag. Um, and also, I've got a footprint for the tent as well. And tent pegs. And there will be some spare guy line in there as well. I've already attached the guy line to the tent. So that's all that's in that side pocket. In this side pocket, here's the extra guy line and the waterproof cover for the backpack. So that goes in there. Now then, it's got a bottom compartment as well, so I'm going to go through that with you now. So in the bottom I've got some matches, just in case the lighter fails and they are in a plastic bag. Um, I've also got my squeeze system. That is a Sawyer squeeze kit, it's got two of the bags, it's got the syringe in there to clean it with and the Sawyer squeeze itself. So that goes in there as well. I've also got this great little contraption. So this is by a company called FlexiTail and this is what I use to pump up my sleeping mat and my, my pillow, but it also has this little cute mushroom diffuser. So this is the um, end that I use to connect to my sleeping bag. And then that pops in there and I attach it like that and uh, yeah, it's great. So let me just show you. So this is the product itself. I hope you can see that in focus if I get out the way. So that's the product itself. It's by Flextail. It's called a Tiny Pump 2. And, and like I said, that just pushes on there like so. And then you've got a light that changes into three brightnesses. And that then connects to that, to your sleeping mat. And it blows it up in seconds actually, it's really, really good. Now then, in here I've put my pillow in a dry bag to make sure it stays dry because it is at the bottom of the bag and it might get put on the floor. There's my uh, Trekology um, Aluft UL80 sleeping mat, love it, really good. I've got my water shoes in case I need to cross a river or feel like going for a bit of a dip. Not likely in this weather. Got some bin bags in there as well, microfiber cloths. And this is the, once again, the Silver Ant tiny little stove. It's really lightweight. It's a titanium stove and it's wrapped up really well, but it's the fuel stove that I've used in a couple of my videos now. Um, and you can see it, you can see the links um, above here of that video if you want to take a closer look. And I take the fuel with me, decanted into a smaller bottle and some baby wipes because I always end up getting messy when I, when I cook. Um, and lastly, my Highlander foil sleep mat, and that goes underneath my sleeping pad, and it should reflect body heat back up towards you, and it also stops your mat getting poked by any sharp bits if you've not to pitch your tent properly. I would also probably take a towel in there for wild swimming, um, and other bits and pieces would squash in there. There's plenty of room in there. This is a new torch that I've got and it is brilliant. It's 1800 lumens. Um, you can turn it on by pressing the button at the end there. It's got three types of brightness which you can control with this button here. You can see how bright it is. And it's got a really good strong beam so it doesn't fade out too much. Um, as I, I normally clip it on like that on my rucksack. You can also charge it with a little cable connection there. There we go, and it is battery as well. Now, the good thing about this torch is that it is drop proof and waterproof. So I have done both. I've used it in water and I dropped it. I actually dropped it in water and it was perfectly fine. It is a little bit heavy, but it's a very good, robust hunting torch. So I will be using this properly. I've not really been able to test it yet because, well, it's not really got dark yet, has it? But now the nights are drawing in and winter is coming. I will be using it. So in the top bag then, in here, now winter is starting to really get close to us, I have got these amazing gloves. These are snow and rainproof gloves. 
They're amazing. They've got fur inside and they also have this little clip here to clip them together. They are so, so warm and I've had them a couple of years now. They're from a company called Heat Holders and um, they are absolutely perfect for playing snowball fights and keeping your hands really, really warm. So I recommend them. And also another favorite of mine is my Heat Holders thermal hat again inside if i can turn it inside you can see it's all fluffy and warm i actually bought my sister one of these as well um but i absolutely love this hat it is so snugly warm yeah i know um that i always take this on winter hikes with me here i'd have my camera my phone my purse and i've also got another hand warmer that again it, this one is also um it's a power bank and it does have a light on it as well, so I do sometimes use that inside the tent or when I'm car camping. So I will take an extra one of them. Again, these aren't very, uh, they're not very light, but they are really handy, literally, to have. And that's basically, other than my raincoat, which I'll probably be wearing at this rate, um, that's basically what I take with me on a wild camp. Um, I have been known to take a bivy bag with me as well as an extra, or a tarp, but on this occasion, because I've got a new tent, I'm not going to be bothering to take that. So all this will go in here, and hopefully, I've not checked the weight yet, um, but hopefully it's not as heavy as it has been in the past. I hope I'm getting better at the whole uh, wild camping weight issue, the packing. I'm, I seem to be getting a bit more into it now. Now I've got one more thing to show you uh, that doesn't actually go in the tent, it doesn't go in my backpack, but I've been sent this, which I have just installed in the car and I'm very excited about. My car, as you know, is a Skoda Fabio Estate. Little Pedro, he is a 2010 model and he's very, very basic, shall we say. Well, now he is not, no more is he basic because this, this, display screen now goes on the dashboard and I will show you, I've already installed it, um, but I will show you what it does. Okay, so I've just jumped in my car to quickly show you this product um, before we set off on our adventure this week. So as I say, this is the product's uh, packaging and it comes with all sorts of bits and pieces inside it, but I've already installed it as you can see here. So this particular model is a 10.3 inch screen. It is a W103 portable smart multimedia dashboard console and it's made by a company called Carpuride. Now they sent this to me to review it because I've got a super old Skoda Fabio Estate so it's a 2010 model but it doesn't have any fancy things it's just got a normal CD player with heating and, and that's about it and normally I have my phone mounted on here for sat nav and everything else. So this product actually automatically connects to your phone so once I get in the car it just links up via Bluetooth and it mirrors my phone. So you can have lots of different apps that are already available on your phone. For example, on mine, I've got Audible, I've got Google Maps, I've got Amazon Music and Spotify, for example. It also does things like it can send and receive WhatsApp messages via voice control. So it's really, really good and safe while you're driving. And it's a brilliant 10.3 inch golden ratio IPS touchscreen. So it's really, really good, really, really responsive. This device is also compatible with iPhone CarPlay as well as Android Auto. Obviously, some of the features might differ depending on your the model of your phone as well. It can connect several ways. Um, it's got several points. You can see already from here, I've got my phone charger plugged in, but it also has um, a charger that goes into the car charger point that charges this device up. It connects via 5G Wi-Fi and it also has uh, Bluetooth 5.0 as well. It connects with a 3.5 aux cable if you want it to. So as I say, this particular model gets two brackets. I'll just show you now. As you can see, I've used this one and it fits on my car really securely. And you can move it around. You can adjust it by just undoing this lever here and that will change the angle of it. But let me take you around to the front so you can see it. Okay, so as you can see, I've got quite a basic car, but it does the trick. So there's an on button here on the top here that also if you short press it, it's a volume switch as well. So I've just pressed it on and it's starting to load up. Turn my radio on as well. There we go. Hey Google, play the news. Here's the latest news. What's the weather forecast for the Peak District? 
Today in the Peak District, it'll be cloudy, with a forecast high of 12 and a low of 8. this device out for about a week now. It's been really handy to have the sat nav really available on a big clear screen and being able to access music just by voice. Sometimes I like to listen to my audiobooks but it's really good that you don't have to keep pressing the screen because obviously we all know now that it's illegal to touch your phone or sat nav while you're driving. So these devices are really really helpful. The fact that it's got so many different connection points and so many ways you can actually produce the music and the sound is brilliant and it's really really easy to use. I thought I'd need some help to install it but it literally was plug it in stick it on the dashboard and away you go so i will be testing it out properly when i go to the peak district at the end of the week hopefully and of course when i go to north wales at the end of the month so i will be giving it a good old test out now for all those of you that like to car camp like myself if you can get your phone to mirror onto this uh, dashboard it will be great for late at night when you're in your bed and you want to watch some tv and you can do it on this nice big screen so that's something that i'm still working on because my phone doesn't seem to be compatible unfortunately but that is also something you can do you can download videos and things onto a tf card and use that in the input port and you'll be able to watch a video on there as well. So that's something I'm going to be testing and I'll show you maybe later on in another video. But for now, as I say, the main things for me that I use is WhatsApp using voice control, which is really handy for a quick message. Um, I use the sat nav and I use the music and audio books and things like that. It's good for just asking Google things while you're driving as well. And it gives you traffic reports and stuff like that. So I think it's really, really good. I don't need to use my phone anymore for sat nav. This phone is on its way out. I've already smash the camera the uh, i've dropped it that many times so that the uh, hard proof case is is in bits basically and also it wears out the battery in case i need to use it for other things so i don't really like using my phone anyway it means i can keep that on charge or in my pocket and just use this it is easy to unfix from the dashboard as well for security the only thing i do need to do is put the wires somewhere and tidy them up a little bit because i've got a couple of wires that are dangling and looking a bit untidy but as i say the more i use this the more i get used to it then i can eventually get it all tidied up so the wires are hidden inside the actual dashboard and yeah i'm really pleased with it so that's it for now i'm going to go back inside and pack away all my stuff getting ready for my weekend adventure so i'm going to be planning my next few trips and that keeps me really excited i don't know if anyone else is like it but i just love the planning stages of trips it gets a little bit overwhelming sometimes when i can't decide where i'm going where to park if i need a campsite or not and, and what tent to take but it's so exciting and it, it makes those dull evenings that we're getting now because there's obviously nothing on TV um, to be able to plan things. Uh, it just really makes the whole the whole adventure more exciting, doesn't it? So if anyone's got any suggestions of where you'd like me to visit in North Wales, then please do let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And that way, especially if you click the notification bell, you won't miss out on any more adventures, any more videos like this. And uh, yeah, I will be bringing you more products as they come to me. I am in no way an expert in these sort of things, but I will show you the products that I've been given or if I've bought them myself, because I do buy them as well. And I'm happy to share these products with you and let you know what I actually think of them. So for now, that's it from me and I shall see you on the next adventure. Bye!